Game Over 86, coming back with another video today, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, I'm just going over the trailer of Death Stranding, give you guys my thoughts and my opinions on this video, and if you guys watched my last Wednesday video uh, just recently, it talks about the days of play coming actually today as of me shooting this video, so if you guys haven't seen that video and you want to know the great deals, go check out that video as well, I'll put a bubble right here for you guys to go check that video out as well and thank you guys for coming to the channel and thank you guys for all the support and thank you once again for viewing this video i'm just going to give you guys my thoughts and my opinions on this video and i thought it was really cool i thought honestly death stranding was supposed to be a highly anticipated game as you guys can see a lot of the stuff was confusing back in the day when they would only show us you know little nitbits of each piece in each part of the movie I don't have the volume up because I don't want to get a copyright strike of it but I do want to talk a little bit more about this and a little bit more in detail going forward with this game now yes we all do this we all know that this game is finally getting released this year and and I was shocked too even though I stated in past videos that I was expecting this video to definitely be this year. Um, a lot of it had to do with timing and when we were going to get it released. A lot of this, a lot of the features in this game, you can see a lot of Metal Gear uh, solid style play. As off, obviously Hideo Kojima is one, is the mastermind behind most of these games and all all of the Metal Gear Solid games except for that one Metal Gear Solid Survive but there's so many great features in this game that I wanted to go over uh, the bike that we're seeing him ride the way the weapons are actual what Death Stranding means with all these evil entities and spirits we were going over all that stuff right now and I just want to talk to you guys a little bit more, more about it in detail now this is going to be a Sony exclusive for those of you that may not know that may be tuning in to see this for the very first time but as you guys can see, the game looks very, very crisp, very clean. Now, and I know, and I want to say something that I've seen a lot of videos didn't say. A lot of this is CGI. A lot of this is all computer, um, obviously, and a lot of it's running off the PlayStation 4 Pro. And it does look still marvelous and pretty, but when they show some of the scenes, you can just tell that it's computer CGI video compared to the actual in-game footage but the game still looks overall breathtaking amazing and the the way the exploration is just the way like the extension ladder goes um, some of the fighting scenes you could just see a lot of the animation you know what I kind of seen from this besides Metal Gear Solid I seen a lot and I understand he uses uh, the engine from uh, Guerrilla Games they let him borrow the engine obviously that for the main game that they used to make was called Killzone and the big game that they were known for in recent was Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, and, and that game was amazing. And that's where I got from this engine to an extent. I, it just kind of reminded me of how much Hideo Kojima can make with these um, with these animations and with these games. What he can actually do. He is a genius when it comes to this stuff. Um, and, a, and a phenomenal phenomenal designer whether it comes to game just visionary or when it comes to game stories and all that I mean they were confusing as hell to me but as you can see just him moving the way he finds the way he walks through a lot of this stuff uh, the main part of the story I from what I've gotten because I haven't really listened to a bunch of other people's stuff I've just seen some videos every you know every now and then but I haven't really listened to a lot but from what I've gotten out of here is he's trying to keep the uh, the infant, the baby that you've seen in the carrying case to bring it to so they can keep the life and keep everything moving. Now, if I'm wrong, tell me because the story is still kind of confusing. I know a lot of it's been laid out, but the fighting scenes and everything uh, looks breathtaking. It looks awesome the way everything is. Uh, the motorcycle looked kind of cool too. You got that three-wheeler style motorcycle. Um, but yeah, the story from what I got is Obviously, there's these evil spirits and demons that are following here. We're trying to take control of that to where they can pretty much take over mankind. And I think this baby is like the pure baby that he's trying to get to this uh, to this area to where he has to create and keep life going, as we know. Um, but as far as the death stranding, there are death that lurks around and everything like it says, those who are connected stay to the past. And as you can see what I mean with death stranding, when I seen this part of the video, I kind of got what it meant. Uh, there's evil demonic kind of kind of spirits and and I got a lot of Metal Gear Solid right here from it um, and, and a lot of great features from it. But obviously when we first seen the demo copy and we seen the lighting mechanism arm that you see spinning right there. 
um, I kind of figured that's what calls out um, the evil spirits or kind of shows them. And I understand they go by sound, I think, and quality like that. Um, so when you hear it, the videos are really creepy at first. Not this one, but the very first few that he showed. But it's just breathtaking the way that the game is developed and, and it looks. And I know a lot of people maybe out there that may be saying, you know, um, you know, a lot of these games take time. Uh, you know, Hideo takes forever sometimes to develop a game and he sometimes goes over budget. But you know what? I think it's cool that he's finally broken away from Konami. I think it's cool that Sony's supporting him. Even if it wasn't Sony, it would be, still be cool. But we know that Sony's going to give you the time, the resources, and, and and a lot of the the patience that it takes to build great games because that's what they want. They want quality over quantity. And I think that is the best feature. You can have 50 games and if they all suck, well, then nobody's really going to be playing them. If you have five games and they're all great, a lot of people are going to go back to playing them, whether it's story online or anything of that nature. In my opinion, a lot of these things are just awesome. And um, a lot of the features are really cool. I don't know how much farther you can do, but from what I've seen in the game, the way that they're trying to manifest, in my opinion, is they're changing the way the landscape is working. And I think this game, obviously going to be a PlayStation 5 game also rolling over, is going to look even that much better possibly. But um, it's just showing you what I think games are going to look forward to in the past or in the future from what they look like in the past. But a lot of these games, obviously, they're all awesome games. That right there gave me a Metal Gear Solid vibe. Uh, uh, the Bleeding Eyes is kind of a cool, um, just really cool design. And, and it's hard to explain really more in detail. But when I see a lot of this stuff and I see a lot of the videos out there that people were making of this, um, I took you know, the thing that they probably took. It's still confusing. It still looks like it's uh, the story's not all the way fleshed out. Um, a lot of people were making videos saying, oh, now we got the whole story. I still think it's it's going to be crazy. I still think going forward that this game is definitely going to be a huge seller. And uh, oh, before I got to mention, I want to let everybody know that the game is going to be coming out in November, and I think it's November seventh. I thought the I thought the video was over, but I forgot at the end where that guy is controlling all pretty much the the Death Stranding demons that are following him, which I thought was cool scene. This was a really good scene in my opinion. Um, and this right here, you know, um, when I seen this, I was thinking, wow, so much. If if you guys have played Metal Gear Solid games over the years, you know what I'm exactly talking about when it comes to a lot of these scenes right here. Um, just really good, good design. I mean, it's very well done. I was glad to get an announcement. I know a lot of people, you know, every time you see a state of play game uh, from PlayStation video, they all hype. When are we going to get re exclusives and releases and all this? And it's just like, you know, sometimes you got to be patient. And I, and I even said state of play is not always going to show you what you want, but Sony's not stupid either. They're going to show you what you want to see um, eventually. And, and a lot of times people do, you know, not anticipate it. And it comes out November 8th. So, I mean, that's a huge release. That's going to be a big time game. A lot of people, as you guys can see at the end, the hand goes up. She walks off, obviously. It just has some real, just spooky style of game, the way he sinks. And um, and I remember uh, Hideo Ajima or uh, Hideo Tommy, or I keep saying Hideo Tommy. It's a pro wrestler. I, I'm, I apologize. Hideo Kojima. Um, with Kojima Productions, and, and I apologize for saying the name wrong, but a lot of people said, and what I've heard from him, is that when you die, you actually, the game don't change. There's like these giant holes, like if you've seen the first video where the people were levitating and stuff, he said that the game just picks up kind of, there can be as unlimited amount of holes. Now, I don't know if that's still going to be in the game. I don't know if he was just saying that for hype, but that's what I was kind of thinking about, how confusing some of his games are at first and the way that games are made. Kojima makes really great games, um, and he has been for years, and I think that won't, I don't think it'll change, um, especially if he's given the time and given the resources and not having to, uh, you know, mess with like Konami, the way they try to cheat, uh, you know, ch pretty much treated him in my opinion. I'm not saying, you know, nothing nobody else knows, but when I seen the game and I talked about it over and over and over again, I, I want people to understand that when oh, State of Play should have showed us this, State of Play should have showed us that, then you'll see all these other videos we'll make in videos about, oh, they should have showed us this and that and the other. And people forget that, you know, the PlayStation 5 is just right around the corner. I mean, there there's going to be people 
wanting these games released and I and I understand that respectfully I understand I mean I would like to see a release date but to say that oh this is garbage man unless they release this it's not worth it and then you see like and I hate to say this but it's like but you never see them say oh well, we had a Super Mario Maker we have uh you know a direct we're gonna have a we had a Smash direct we have a Pokemon direct just a direct you know, you go to E3 and it's like the whole direct 45 minutes was Super Smash Brothers. Now, I'm not dogging anybody, that, but you like they'll sit there and say, oh, it was still good. It was still good. Sony didn't really do and This was still good. And, and I'm not defending Sony. I'm just saying like people always want to bash Sony and praise Nintendo, it seems like. And I, and it's just funny because it's like Sony don't just shell out game after game after game of, of franchise title after title like Nintendo does. Um and the biggest thing that I think is different between Nintendo is you can look at the time it takes to make Super Mario Party, which they've already made, what, 10 of them, 15 of them? Super Mario Maker, they've made two. One was on a console that all these Nintendo fans didn't even want to buy, practically, uh, in the Wii U. And then they want Pikmin 4, and they want all these other games, uh, Luigi's Mansion 3. And, and a lot of this stuff, and this ain't a video on that, I'm just saying when I see all this, and I hear all of it, it's just funny how... All these games that Nintendo makes, we've played years and years over. Um, it's nothing like groundbreaking, new, innovative. Um, it's not like they're bringing in different companies to go, oh my goodness, like Astral Chain looks really cool. Damon X Machina looks pretty cool. But is it going to be like Death Stranding? Is it going to be like Ghost of Tsushima? Is it going to be like a new God of War version or a Spider-Man? I understand these games have came out before with God of War and Spider-Man. But when you look at new innovative ways, they're letting these companies kind of stretch out you know, stretch their legs and really focus on bringing different style IPs. And I think that's what I appreciated from Sony from the first start of this generation in 2013 is, yeah, not all the games are going to be gold blockbuster hits, but a lot of their games are going to have a lot of thought behind it and not just Kirby Star Allies where I can just set the remote down and let my allies beat the bad guy. Or Yoshi's Crafted 3D World that is like Yoshi's Wally World. Wally World. A lot of these games are okay but they're not worth, in my opinion, all $60. They're not worth that much. But people will pay it because people will defend it tooth and nail. And this ain't a shot at Nintendo or Nintendo fans. I'm just saying it's just funny how we always see uh, um, everybody say, oh, man, this looks amazing. This looks amazing. Zelda won Game of the Year because, first of all, it was a really cool game. But if I got to be critical, it runs at 27 frames and it wasn't always the best. And there's a lot of miss features on there that a lot of people i mean 900p 27 frames oh game of year i'm not saying that it's not great but when you look at god of war and what they changed from it and then they say well breath of the wild was a big change and it's like yes i know but it's still lackluster when it compares to the overall gaming quality that you want in every game and i know that may rub a lot of people the wrong way they may unsubscribe from me and that's fine i'm just giving you guys my opinion when i see death stranding do you guys see zelda in that do you see that quality in Zelda? Some people may say, yeah. And some people say, well, you know, Zelda's different. Zelda's this. When you see Mario Party uh, or, or when you see Mario Odyssey, it's a great game, but does it not look like Mario Sunshine slash Mario 64? Smash them all together. Does it not have that vibe? There's nothing really different. When it went from Mario th uh, Super Mario 3 on the NES to Super Mario 64, there was the difference. That's what I mean. It's it's just not really that big of a difference. I mean, you look at Mario uh, a Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. It's like the number one seller for Nintendo. It came out on the Wii U that nobody bought. But everybody's like, oh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, man. It's going to sell 25, 30 million. That's nice and all. It could have sold more on the Wii U if people would have bought it. Now, I'm not saying that they all thought, oh, man, the Switch is awesome. Switch is awesome. It lacked that portability. Yeah, but I want a portable thing that's going to run games that are always going to be great. Not some going to be ported over that suck. Some ported over that are going to be great. Some going to run good. Some aren't going to run good. Don't even have this. Don't have that. It is what it is. But when I look at these games like Death Stranding, do you see any other games that look like that? When you look at God of War or Spider-Man, do you see games look like that in the past five years? And if you say Zelda Breath of the Wild, well, okay, let's knock every one of these games down to 900p and run them at 30 frames or 25 to 27 frames when it gets into a combat mode or when it's trying to load all this stuff, trying to play it in handheld. It definitely has a lot of its problems in Zelda. Um, but technically, you guys say Zelda Breath of the Wild is such a great game. It was a Wii U game. <laughs> when it all comes down to it, it was a last-gen console game.
It just got ported to the Switch, and it got released on this same day. You want to know why? Because nobody's going to buy a $300 Switch and play 1-2 Switch or Puya Puya Tetris. If you want to talk about game releases and all this other stuff. Nobody's going to buy, oh, Super Bomberman for the Switch. Mario, Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. A lot of these games are Switch ports or Wii ports. And it's like people will say, oh my god, these games are selling like crazy now because the Switch is selling great. Yeah, well, the Wii U also had Call of Duties and it had Maddens and it had a lot of other stuff that like the Switch still don't have. And are they going to have it? I see all these other channels talk about it. This ain't a rant. This is just me trying to explain when I think of Death Stranding. Like the Switch can't handle Frostbite Engine. I'm sorry. I know I know graphics. I know design. I know all this stuff and features. I know what you have to have. I know what cores and threads and GPU difference between CPU and not a 1660. Yes, that's a shot. It's a 660. 14 teraflops. Do your job. And by the way, I want to end it with this because I am passionate and I am faithful and I am real and I'm honest and I'm literally the most unbiased person channel you will ever come to, whether I'm 100,000 views, a million views, a million subs, 10,000 subs, 5,000 subs. It don't matter. I'm going to stay the same because that's what got me there in the first place. And I think people forget about what the grind and the struggle it takes to get to that position. And when you get to that position, people hold you accountable. People expect you to be honest and people, you know, and have dignity and self-respect rather, let alone just respect, but self-respect. And I seem to see a lot of people that always make these mistakes and put it out and, and play the victim card where they got death threats and all this. And and I've stated this before in other videos. I think a lot of these YouTubers that say that they got inside sources are just saying that they look good. They don't. Okay. And I'll say it again, just like other people do. Nobody tells anybody anything unless you're huge, like 10 million channel, 10 million subs. And I don't think a lot of people will break their embargo agreement just to tell somebody with 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 subs, or hell, even if a million subs, you see all these other bigger channels and it's like, they don't know any of this. And then the stuff that they say in the video, we've already known the past week. And yes, this is a little jump from the video, but when I see Death Stranding and I see all these other videos, it's like 99% of these videos that are big YouTubers, a lot of them, there's only like one or two Xbox video channels and then one or two PlayStation channels. And then the rest of them are all Nintendo pretty much channels until the PlayStation 5 or Xbox 2 hits and then they all jump again. They're only out to feed the news to get the views. Yes, I could make a t-shirt on that and sell it, I'm pretty sure. Okay? That's all they do. They make, they, they literally make videos to get the views. Okay? They spew the news, rebu rebu rebute, you know, whatever. They, they literally repeat the news to get views. And I know you guys are going to think, wow, that's cool at the end. And I'm just being honest with you. Like, I like a lot, some of them. Some of them I, I, I sit and I'm just like smacking my head up against the wall. And sometimes I laugh. And I'm just like, wow, all these other people are blinded by coming here and not getting information that they need. They're getting lied to. And, and a lot of people are just getting deceived. And it's sad to see on a YouTube uh, platform, especially... Uh, you know, with people that are in higher positions that should be definitely holding um, themselves more accountable for uh, their actions when they record or press record. I think we all should take that uh, initiative as a YouTubers, um, the people that are out there. And if you watch my video, hopefully you can appreciate what I'm telling and, and talking about, but I don't sit back and I don't play favorites and I won't play nice with everybody and everybody. That's probably why a lot, I don't get a lot of shout outs and a lot of people that are like, oh, check this guy's video out or this guy's doing good or this guy's a hard worker. I don't need anybody to kiss my ass. I don't need anybody to tickle my my balls and I damn sure don't need anybody to give me shout outs. Is it cool to collab? Is it cool to work with people? Yeah, but at the end of the day, I'm just going to be real. And if I don't believe they're being real, if they're not being passionate, if, the, if I find them to be fake, then I don't want to work with any of them, let alone one. And that's just how I am. And I think people that do follow me on Twitter, that do follow me on YouTube, that do comment down below, they appreciate that. And I think they can see the realness that I'm speaking or that I'm saying and that I am. Once I get bigger and better and I get better quality equipment, videos, dude, I'm going to be bringing so much more crazy nonsense to this channel. That's going to be awesome. And I hope you guys appreciate it. And I hope you guys are still there for me and for yourselves for that ride. Because I think going forward, man, it's only going to get bigger. It's only going to get better. But I think a lot of the things that I want people to take from this video and every video that I do, whether I say it at the end of the video or whether I don't, 
when you come to this channel and you leave, you know deep down inside, wow, I was just told some real shit. I was told the truth. I wasn't led up a str uh, you know, up the tree going, oh yeah, I don't, I don't have a clue. That sounded like this guy was lying to me. This guy sounds like he's deceiving people for views and clicks. Oh, he's just making up bullshit nonsense. I don't want that. I want people to leave or say when they see my channel, hey, he's going to shoot you straight. Yeah, you may not appreciate it. May yeah, you may not like all his uh, views or opinions, but at least he's going to be real with you and at least he's going to be honest because that is the ultimate sign of respect in my opinion when people show you and say wow i don't like him but he's he don't say anything wrong i just don't like his views and that's fine man that is understandable but i'm gonna be as real as i can i'm not gonna be fake and i'm damn sure gonna stick to what i do best and that's giving you guys the most positive energy the most unbiased realist gaming news game plays game streams whatever and i cannot wait to keep this train a rolling right down the tracks baby and i can't wait to see you guys there with me i'm gonna i'm gonna have to end this video because it's being pretty long but i love you very much do a good deed and like i stay always stay safe take care of one another enjoy every video game you guys play and i'll see you guys on the next video and i do apologize for how long this video is trust me guys it is hot in my room i got the fan off before we end the fan off the fan off up above me I'm hot. I'm ready to go get these fans back on so I can cool off. Yes, my central air is broke. I have no money to fix it. And don't worry, I will definitely be making that money. Grinding and hustling, baby, every day. I love you very much. Stay safe. Peace.